This will be an in-depth guide on how to create a war paint that actually fits the game and not utilize stickers or clipboard or Google stock images as textures. I will provide examples on how to create free, very simple textures. I will also go over the game's use of colors and why it's very important to keep this in mind when creating skins. Timestamps will be in the description so you can skip to which part you please. Or if you are watching this video just for the sake of entertainment, please enjoy. Hello, it is time. Yes, I know it's been a while and I know Fish on a Stick beat me to it, but hey, more of these the better, I think. And the reason why this one got so delayed is because I could literally not speak, but that's not what's important. So you want to make war paints. I'm talking good ones, not garbage. The ones people will like, that fits the game, that we actively play. The ones who people will go out of their way to buy and put on their weapons to admire and not be used as trade-off fodder. A skin you will see highly desired on the market, and especially in unusual quality. We're gonna create those today. But firstly, I'm no way an expert, to, so to say, at making war paints. I've just created a lot of them, and during my time creating them, I have learned a lot. A lot, a lot, actually. To the point where I can manipulate the texture groupings on weapon models so I can create new war paint bases that the Valve would never add because it's something I will explain later in the video. So, let's begin. <laughs> If you're totally new to war paints, you will have no idea how to even import the textures or even view them that we all would have in game. Which is why you're gonna need two programs. One photo editing program if you're choosing. I can recommend Krita, since that's the program my friend Arthur uses to make his war paints. It is free, so I recommend you pick it up if you don't have money for Photoshop, which is the one I'm using for making war paints. And this tutorial will sadly be based off of that. Now back to the programs. You will also need VTF Edit and GFC Scape. VTF Edit will let you view and create VTF files. VTF files are basically Val texture files for short. And GFC will let you browse in-game files. Why do I need to view in-game files? I hear you ask, right? Well, that's because to create your own warpaint, you need to use the warpaints that we already have in-game as a template. You see, you're essentially doing a texture swap and telling Valve to implement these textures that you've created for this specific warpaint. I will provide examples of warpaints that uses the same warpaint template, but are just different texture-wise. I know this is a lot to take in at once, but you'll wrap your head around it at some time. But the links for these programs will be in the description. Same with the workshop guide, if my words weren't enough. Now this is a crucial step that you need to understand before you start making war paints for TF2. And that is to understand its game's art style and its use of colors. So let's start with something simplistic. Colors. If the war paint you're gonna create is gonna utilize the color red or blue as the main texture, you have to make it a team variant. Otherwise, this will heavily conflict with team recognition. War paints that has failed these standards are Broken Bones, Frozen Aurora, Shilla Autumn, Glacial Glazed, Igloo, and partially Macaw Mask because of its grading gimmick it has. Either way, these war paints that look like they're team colored, but aren't. Of course, you can have some exceptions. For example, my Soaring Slugger war paint. The blue version has tiny red details, like the stickers and this texture right here. However, when looking at the red version and the blue version and put them side to side, you see how distinct they actually are, and that's what's important. If you can tell what team they're on just by looking at the main texture itself and not by these small details, that for most of the time playing, you barely even see, there isn't a big problem. Loose exceptions can be made, but when the main texture heavily leans towards some of the team colors, you gotta make it a team variant, or else it will conflict with gameplay, thus reducing the chance of your warping getting in and disliked by some people due to that main reason alone. Remember people, it's the red team and blue team. Saturation. Another thing when it comes to colors is that it's heavily desaturated. See, if you look at TF2, what do you see? Well, there are colors, but look at the saturation. There's not that much saturation in this game. You don't see full white, void black, neon green, or pink in this game. 
The only time you'll see these type of colors is when you look at the smaller details. By far, the most saturated color in this game are the team colors, red and blue. You can easily identify them in the midst of battle or in the background. So when it comes to making war paints, make sure to tone down that saturation, because it will help your war paint look more of a part of the game rather than a visual eyesore. Remember what game you're creating skins for people. Of course, that doesn't mean flashy skins are banned, it just means you gotta balance them out. And what I mean with that is, is to balance out the flashy bits with the more boring bits. An example of this is to look at the pink skins from the Powerhouse collection. One out of these three skins are good. Which one do you think? If you guessed the Flash Fryer, congratulations you are a furry. Jokes aside here, the current event Scattergun is the best one out of these three. In my opinion. Why you may ask? Well, that's because it did a great job balancing out the saturated colors with the neutral, calm, solid colors. You have just enough of those solid colors to make the main texture pop so much more, compared to these other two. These two have so little of these solid colors, it makes it such a mess. An eyesore, if you would call it so. Now, thank god these are just skins and not war paints, but we have something similar to this, as a war paint. Part of phantoms and broken bones. Jesus Christ. This is an example of how not to create a flash of war paint. The main texture is just everywhere on a weapon model. It makes it really hard to look at. Not to mention there are players who actually get it in higher wear and put festivars on it. It makes them look even worse. Now, let's compare these two to other two war paints that makes the flashy bits work on a war paint. Those two are Jazzy and Park Pigmented. Yes, it has one busy, flashy main texture, but it's balanced out by two solid colors that are purely very vibrant but works somewhat well as a flashy war paint, since they barely have any textures on them. Park Pigmented has a white, flashy main texture, but as you can see, it isn't busy with its texture work. That gives it more room to make more flashy details. For instance, this bright, saturated red and these yellow bits on the gun. This brown texture carries this war paint, since it gives it the calm, muted color it so desperately needed. And with all of this combined, it is a really, really good war paint that is both flashy and fits within the style of the game. Somewhat. This is why balancing out the flashy bits is important. The worst offender to this is Starlight Serenity, where it's just a rainbow gradient slapped together with solid black with some star stickers over it. It's basic, it's soulless, it's just fucking ugly. Keep the flashy parts to a minimum or else we turn into a mess like these mistakes. Again, this is Team Fortress 2. Not Fortnite, not Valorant, not CSGO or CS2. You cannot make a hyper saturated color bomb and expect it to look good in a heavily stylized game like TF2. Where you have these imperfections, washed out colors and a dirty, dingy desert country feel to it. Most of TF2's textures are simple and does not need super variated textures or patterns. It just needs to be simple. If you disagree with these facts, then maybe you shouldn't make a skin for TF2 at all and learn how to make them for CSGO instead, where you can actually get more paid if you actually get it in. Now that we've gone over the team coloring, use of super saturated colors and how to balance them out, now we gotta talk about that something that almost every skin has in common in TF2. If you haven't noticed it, every weapon uses a flat neutral color. Almost every warpaint has this. Why you may ask? Well that is to give it a good contrast from the main texture to complement it. Now of course this doesn't have to be a flat color, it can have a texture just look at the coffin nail skins, swashbuckled, hazard warning, Damascus mahogany, tiger buffed. All of these skins have something in common, and that is to balance out the main texture with a secondary color that also has a texture, but has less contrast in order for the main texture to look less busy. A warm paint that fails in this regard is Pacific Peacemaker. The main texture is already busy enough, but the creator opted to make another engraved texture for the secondary texture. Not only does this make it look very busy, but it also makes it really hard to look at in certain cases, because you don't know which part of the gun you should focus on. With some Photoshop magic, I could remove these engravings, and as you can see, the main texture pops a lot more and looks way better, because the secondary texture's job is to support and complement the main texture. Now, you can also use solid colors as the secondary texture. It does not need to always be a subtle texture in of itself. 
Many other Warpaints does this, like Night Owl, Sacred Slayer, Sunriser, Bomb Carrier, and even your beloved Frozen Aurora. All of these Warpaints uses a super solid color as a secondary texture. Remember, again, TF2 textures are very, very simple. And that makes it easier for you and us. Now, if you're wondering what determines a main texture from a secondary texture or a tertiary texture and so on and so forth, well, take a look at something like, you know, not Cracker Mark 2. How many textures do you see here? Well, there's five of them. Now, which texture takes up the most of the weapon model? Well, it is pretty obvious. So yes, this is the main texture you're gonna work with. Now for the part that you've all been waiting for. How do you actually create a Warpaint? Well, first of all, you gotta know what template you're gonna use. And probably 80% of you all are already lost, so let me explain. You would think that every Warpaint in this game has its own unique base and texture mapping onto the weapon models, and you would be partially correct. However, the truth is that there are different Warpaint templates, but there are multiple different Warpaints in the game that uses the same Warpaint template. For example, Sunriser uses Helldriver Warpaint Base, Sky Stallion uses Park Pigmented, Secretly Serviced uses Anodized Aloha, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it's a good idea to choose a template, or a Warpaint Base, that is a mercenary grade. Since when are you gonna do the promotional art, that being showing off your Warpaint in-game when you upload it to the workshop, you wanna be able to buy them for cheap, instead of using an expensive or high-tier Warpaint as a template. If you do, you can always try to find a template that is the same and cheaper later on. It just saves a lot of trouble, and confusion maybe. Anyway, let's get started. So let's start off with something simple, grey and brown. These colors are gonna be your best friend during the start of your warping creation, since these colors will always work together and it's really hard to make them look bad on a warpaint. You can also throw in a tertiary color, like gold, brighter versions of grey, or perhaps even black. I have created a color palette and a bit of concept art on how to make this color work. I want wood for the secondary texture, black, iron slash steel for the main texture, and shiny brass as the tertiary to break it up a bit. I'm going to use the recent Pacific Peacemaker as a warpaint base. It's a mercenary grade, not team colored, and is relatively cheap and has three textures. Now the question is, how do we replace these textures with their own? Well, that is surprisingly simple to do. This is where YCF Scape comes in clutch. With this program, you can browse through in-game files for these, and with VTF Edit Tool, you can view these files. Firstly, go into your library and right-click on TF2 and go to Properties. Go to Install Files and click on Browse. Go into the TF folder and scroll all the way down to the TF2 underscore textures dot dir file. Right click it and open it with GCF scape. Now this is where it's gonna get a bit hectic, but bear with me. Click on the materials folder and find the patterns folder and then workshop. As you can see, this is where all of the warping collections are. We got the Smith Smith warping collections and the Scream Fortress ones. And recently the summer one, which is actually what we are looking for. Click into that folder and a bunch of other folders will pop up with different numbers on them. Now the names or the numbers here aren't important, because within these files there are texture files for all the war paints within this war paint case. This applies for all the war paints in the workshop section of these files. For example, in the Scream Fortress 2021 folder you will find texture files for the Necromancer war paint or Poltergeist or Kill and Conquer. Or in 2017 you will find Damascus Mogany. Jassy, Hazard Warning, and so on. But again, we're looking for the Pacific Peacemaker textures. Well, or, well, I am. Click on the folder that ends with the number 32, and the Pacific Peacemaker textures should be in there. You can easily view the textures by opening them with VTF Edit, to make sure that you find the right texture. Now for the last step is to drag the folder out to your desktop, and that's it. And congratulations, you now know how to extract the game's texture files, and you are now ready to create your own textures. Now, of course, you don't need to use the Pacific Peacemaker as a base. This was just an exercise. You can go find which war paint you want to reskin yourself, like Sunriser with its rotation lock feature, or Tiger Buffed with its gradient feature, or perhaps Necromance with its custom wear and stickers, and etc. There's a guide on Steam that tells you the exact location of textures for each war paint in the game. This can be super handy when you're using a Mark II Warpaint as a template, since Mark II Warpaint uses textures before Warpaints were a thing, and these sort of textures are scattered throughout the Patterns folder. This guide will be linked in the description and be in the pinned comment. Now this is the part where you gotta experiment on your own. 
it is completely impossible for you to follow a guide step by step on how to create textures. Well, you can, but I will take you forever and you won't really learn anything. So instead, I will show you a time lapse of footage of me creating the war paint for this video. I will commentate over it and explain what I'm doing and what I'm doing it. So I hope you people take notes and experiment on your own. There's nothing wrong with playing around with a program. Hello everyone, uh, Monkey here. As you can see here by the mic quality, it's a lot worse. But here you can see me creating my war paint or the, the wood texture. As you can see, I added noise and then I slapped on a, on a uh, filter, which was a, gay, a directional blur, which gives it this long uh, waviness and then I slapped on a filter to give it more of a natural feeling to it. And then I'm right now I'm playing around with a bunch of, re a bunch of rectangles. What these rectangles are, are the kind of like the lines in the wood, I don't know what they're called, because again, I'm no, I'm no expert, but I'm just trying to <laughs> create uh, textures. That's all I, uh, that's all I am, no, I'm no, in no way a wood expert, but here we are. I'm doing lighter and darker versions of this, and try to add a, uh, like, bl blur filters to them to melt them melt in more, playing around with the uh, opacity and the layer, layer, filters or whatever and uh, I'm trying to make it feel more natural but again not too natural right to TF2 textures are very simplistic again this is a secondary texture I'm working on so I don't want to make it too busy but I wanted to make it look somewhat nice as you can see here I'm liquefying it to make it more you know appealing not boring not straight it's supposed to be supposed to be good and here you can see I'm trying to figure out the seam what a seam, what what a seam is, is what uh, the game is trying to repeat. It's supposed to be a repeating pattern, and as you can see here, I'm trying to like figure out uh, what I need changing, and I'm playing around with a bunch of layers, basically copying it and playing around the opacity to like kind of blur them out and make them melt in, which worked out pretty well. Uh, so I stuck with that, and here I am trying to add on some brushes. To try to make them more, I guess, TF2-esque, you know, those wood ships, kind of. Um, adding a little bit of detail, uh, like, talking small details, not like details that stick out. These small details to give the wood a, bit, a little bit of, I guess of a wood feeling, and here you can see I'm making a knot, right? Again, just with regular cir circles, and it works. Just play around with a bunch of filters and a bunch of, uh, well, op opacity settings, and make them blurry to make them melt in a lot, uh, like a lot more with the wood texture, and it <laughs> goes <laughs> pretty well. These brushes, by the way, are TF2 brushes, and I will link them in the description for you to download. Uh, I don't as you can see, I'm not using them as they are. I'm trying to like use other brushes to like, or uh, erasers to try to make them more distinct, so it doesn't see it feel like, or it doesn't become a pattern where I reuse the same brushes all over again. So I try to like give them more shape. As you can see here, I kind of <laughs> messed up with the uh, uh, with, with the layer here, but that's okay. You barely even see it. Plus, it just melts in. You barely even see it to begin with, but it's there. It's there. It adds a lot. Uh, again, it all comes down to contrast. If you get enough contrast in this thing, uh, it looks a lot better. And now I'm playing around with the contrast. And as you can see, I will port it into the game and see how it looks. Here's the Fong map, by the way, that I'm trying to do. So it looks great. So, yeah. And here we are in game, trying to check it out, and boom, it looks pretty okay, I'd say. Uh, there's a seam there, but that's okay, we'll fix that later. But as it is, it somewhat works, it needs a bit more tweaking, which is, some which is something I do. And it's something you should always do, it's always to tweak the war paints. But now, I will skip to the next part of making the steel texture. Here we are, we started with the color palette, and we are just going straight in with a bunch of brushes. Because a lot of these textures, a lot of these boring steel iron type textures is that they have a lot of paint brushes. Because it, I'm trying to mimic that TF2 painterly style. And um, I'm trying to like work up with a nice seamless pattern. Oh, sorry. Seamless pattern here. 
and I, I'm trying to like go with that it like instantly so but like when you like you don't want to make your pattern look like like it is seamless but you don't you don't you don't want people to notice the seam of where the air where the texture repeats right you want to try to make it a bit natural and here I am it's nothing wrong to add in a little bit of color like with this olive military type uh, green it's never bad to add something in like that to give it more life you know to because this is the main texture we're working with by the way adding in a little bit of color can change a lot I think I'll add in a lot of uh, red too in the it's pretty soon but again I'm used to going in with all the brushes doing everything I'm just kind of I'm making stuff up on the spot as we are or as we're sp speaking or as we are here so don't make fun of me but uh, you know here we are lol and again Playing around with opacity and, and, um, oh god, blur isn't a bad thing at all. It, try, it, ma it makes everything melt in, which is, I've said something, which is something I've said probably like 16 times. Uh, and I'm adding on some paint, like, uh, splashes, I guess. I don't know. It, it, this gets really repeating. Or it is kind of repeating where I'm doing the same stuff all over again. This is a. Uh, this takes a bit of time. This is like every second is like. But I'm trying to look at the clock over here. Uh. Like, ten seconds is like a minute. I don't know. I sped this up a lot. A lot. I don't know. <laughs> but here I am. I tossed in the red, and I think that looks really nice. It blends in. You get that kind of. It mix mixes in with the black or. Well, I, I muted it a lot and desaturated it, you know, so it doesn't stick out way too much. I'm playing around with more brushes. This is basically what creating most of these textures are. You play around with brushes, see what sticks, and you go back. I think I... <coughs> oh, shit, sorry. Ugh. Sound like a fucking crack whore. <laughs> uh, I hope you're enjoying this, by the way. Like, I'm sitting here just watching this. This, this is just turning into a commentary as, as we speak. I mean, it is. I said I'd commentate all over this, but we're almost nearing the, nearing the end. But here I am, playing around with a bunch of the opacity to trying to make it not... I, I want it to be sleek. But I don't want everything to stick out too much. And again, all of you should always have these layers to play around with later on. As you're trying to make, you know, stuff work. And people are DMing me, for some reason. Uh, and I'm soon going into the Fong map to check it out of how it looks, probably. We're gonna go in, I check the seam, everything looks nice. Yeah, here we go, here's the Fong map. I used the color key to like get everything, to mark everything. And um, trying to get like the uh, lighter bits lighter and reflect more and the darker bits reflect less. And there we go, save it. Here, here I am importing the textures, choosing the file and saving it. Go into the textures, copy it and just go into the, the actual files, push it in there, boop. There we go. Well, how does it look? So there's the current one. I don't see any difference. I don't think I did either. So I'm gonna go in and change it again, I think. <laughs> uh, I mean, I see a little bit of difference, but there's not a lot. So I need to go in and change it. So yeah, so I'm back at it again. <laughs> uh, adding in a lot more details because that's what it, what it suffered from. It lacked a lot of details. So I'm adding more of it to give it more of this dingy look, which is what really, really works in TF2. Not many people realize it, but these dingy, dirty sort of textures just work, right? Nothing bad to have like an overhaul of textures on a gun. Even though it doesn't add a lot, it you know it, would, it doesn't add a lot of colors, but it adds a lot of personality to the gun, especially on the scatter gun. I think the scatter gun with the skin or the grenade launcher and the minigun looks really kick ass with the skin. Skin again. Here I am changing the um, Fong map, and uh, you know the lighter bits when it, on the Fong map, it, which is in the alpha layer. The lighter it is, the more reflective it's going to be. So I up that. So let's see how it actually looks in game. There we go. Damn, nice. That looks a lot nicer, I'd say. The black, like the there's some there's some tweaking that it's doing, but as it stands, it looks a lot. It looks very very nice. And here we are. 
the brass texture, or rather gold. I call it brass because, you know, gold is a bit, you know, I call it brass because it just feels more natural. But here we are. I don't know, I don't, re I barely remember creating this one, but I tried to go for like a different look. It doesn't need like to have a very realistic look. It just needs to be a bit different. So that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I'm basically right now trying to go in with all of the... Uh, paint chips and whatever but i'm trying to get these sort of scratches going and it seems to work out pretty well again i'm gonna stand up for a bit here oh i need to stretch remember to stretch people it's really important oh well what are we going for okay i'm still trying to create the scratches playing around with the, with the perspective and with a bunch of i mean yeah you, you don't I'm, you, again i don't have like a drawing pad I, all i use is my mouse <laughs> I'm not an artist in any way, it's just like, oh, well, I guess I do this now. I do what I will have to do, and I will do it until it looks okay by my standards. So, again, here I am, going in with the um, Fong map. I copied and pasted a bunch of uh, paint brushes from the steel texture. And I think that's okay, because I created it. And it saves me a bunch of time, and people won't notice it. And it looks absolutely awful on the rock launcher, I noticed. And here it is on the grenade launcher. And mmm, yacht. That looks nice. But again, I need more contrast, which is what I'm gonna go in and do. So I'm creating these lines to cr give it more of a, uh, I don't know, more of a scratched up look. Because that looks really cool, I think. And you won't really notice it until you actually try to look for it. But you'll see it on the grenade, like on the rocket launcher as you saw there. Due to how war paint bases go, you, I can't do anything about it. Or while I can, I can go in and change the groupings. But Valve will never accept the skin because it, it goes above the uh, normal copy and paste job as they do. But here we are. The grenade launcher. I changed the wood as you can see. It looks a lot nicer. And there's a minigun. I desaturated the wood a little bit. And as you can see... There's a lot more contrast going on with the brass texture because, again, as you saw, there's huge portions of it that shows on the rock launcher. So I need to balance that out. So, yeah, that looks pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, and the rock launcher looks dumb dog shit, but that, that's just me going in and changing a bunch of the textures. So. Now, when you're done making the textures, God bless your soul, there are things that you might want to take into consideration. An alpha channel, or fong maps. What's a fong map, I hear you asking, right? Well, that's a thing that determines which part of the texture reflects the most. The more white it is, the more reflective it is. And more black means less reflective. And by default, meaning if you haven't changed the fong map at all, it's pure white. Which is why some warpings like Chill the Autumn and Hell Father Hell are so reflective, since the creators didn't know or care about this feature. Hence why I personally call them amateur work. In Photoshop, by your layers, there should be a tab called Channels, and there you should see the RGB channels. Click on the plus button and the alpha channel should appear. Now I'm sorry if you're using GIMP or any other photo editing program, I do not know where the channel is. And by the way, I'm pretty sure there should be a guide for it, so go look that up. What I usually do when I do a fong map is that I use the color range tool in Photoshop and I mark the brighter bits. Then with everything marked, I go into the alpha channel and with this being the tertiary texture that's also brass, I want to make it a bit bright. So I use a nice bright brush in order for it to reflect a lot more. Again, it also depends on what texture it is. If it is like metal, maybe it should reflect more. Stone, wood, maybe it should reflect less. I don't know. It all depends on what you want. And yes, with this, you can give engravings more depth with how light interacts with it. This is a very common type trick that you can do. Really, really neat. Another thing to take into consideration is to make your texture seamless. Basically, what you need to do is to make your texture repeat itself seamlessly, without any weird cuts. Again, some war paints in game has these nasty seams, which is another sign of amateur work. I mean, take a look at the Glacial Glazed or Miami Element. Again, another sign of amateur work. Now in Photoshop, to view your, how your texture repeat itself, go to Filter, Other, and Offset. There are a few ways to make your texture seamless, but depending on what texture it is, some methods are better than others. One way is to use a healing brush. In some situations, it does work. Another way is to manually patch up the seam line. And sometimes you can use a layer mask and a gradient tool to fix it. Again, there are so many ways to fix this. 
I myself want to cover everything here, and to be honest, there are other tutorials on the internet that explains this process way better than I do. And last part is importing your textures. Yes, we're finally here, I'm sorry it took this long. Now depending on which texture you have chosen, what you need to do is to create the same folder directory path to that VTF file that you found in GCF scape in your customs folder. Basically you need to recreate the GCF scape path in your customs folder and you need to name those folders the exact same way. For the sake of the video, let's say I want to replace these three Pacific Peacemaker texture files with my own texture files. So first off, open Steam and go to TF2 and browse its files. If you don't have a customs folder here, just create one and name it custom. And if you don't have another customs folder in there, just create one and call it whatever you want. And from here, just copy all the folder names in GCFscape and put them in yours. Same name, same one after another. Till you get to the folder that the original texture files are in. Then you can simply just drag that folder in from GCFscape and replace those VTF files with your own VTF files and giving them the same name. When you created the same path for your texture files, they should appear in game. You can simply check this by changing the wear on the weapon you're inspecting. Also something quick that I forgot to mention, basically when you save your image or your texture, save them as a targa or a TGA as it's called. This file can later be used in VTF edit so you can turn it into a VTF file. So when you save it as a TGA, open up VTF edit and click on file and then click on import and then choose your TGA or Targa that you will turn into a VTF file. And then you save it and you know, do whatever, you know, save as and you know, you, you know the rest. You're not dumb, are you? I don't think so. Now, the last part, and what I think is the easiest part of this entire thing. Uploading it to the workshop. You want to make promotional art, which are the images people can view your product and decide if they want to see it in game or not. To create these, there are three things that you need. A screenshot of a TF2 map that people play on, this is what's called a backdrop. The green screen mod and screenshots of your war paint applied to weapons. In-game screenshots of you holding your weapon and inspecting it in-game. So let's get a backdrop. Open up TF2, click on create server, choose a map that people mostly play on, like Badwater, Upward or, or Twofort. For this instance, I'm gonna choose Freight. When you're in the game, open up the console and type the following, MP underscore tournament 1 and SPG 1. You all know what the second command does, but the first one is what stops the timer from ticking down so you can walk around the map in peace. Now. Toggle no clip and fly throughout the map and find a good backdrop. Make sure there isn't too much clutter and get a good view of the skybox too. When you find a good spot to take a screenshot, type CL underscore draw HUD zero to disable your HUD. There are a few ways to get rid of your weapon models. First, to set your view model to an extremely high number so it just doesn't exist. Or switch to scout with a mad milk, fly up to the same spot. Throw the milk and keep holding down the mouse 1 button and take your screenshot. Take a few more screenshots from around the map as backup images if the first one doesn't work out somehow. You can never really be too careful. Now this might be a bit complicated, but it's not. Install the green screen mod through the link in the description or in the pinned comment and shove it into the customs folder. Restart TF2 and that's it. Go into the war paint inspection and kiss your eyesight goodbye. Select common weapons that people use like the meeting gun, scatter gun, rocket launcher, sniper rifle. Take screenshots of these weapons with a good angle and use the shotgun to show off the war paint with high aware so people know how it looks in high awares. This is probably the best thing you can do. In-game screenshots. Now this is the part I hope you've chosen a good war paint template because if you don't, well, you got money to burn. Yes, for some reason you can't use commands to inspect skins, so you actually have to use money. Thanks Valve. Now if you're just a kid or poor, you don't need to worry about this step too much. But you should at least have two different weapons to show off in your promo so people know how it looks in the hands of the player. Firstly, buy the skins, go into the game, same app again, do the commands, and play Scott. Turn up the quality settings to the maximum level, equip the skins, take a few screenshots with them, even do a taunt and grab a few screens there, I don't know, done. Okay, so now go get your favorite photo editing program. Mine is Photoshop. Open it up and open up a blank 1080 by 1920 canvas. Then we need your screenshots folder. Go to Steam, go to TF2 library, scroll down to screenshots, manage screenshots, show on disk, 
Import your backdrops first and try to find which one fits nicely. Add a blur to it so it'll be easier to show off the weapons, not too much blur though. Import your green screen weapons, color key them out, this can actually be a bit tricky, I barely understand it myself, but keep marking the green shit and press backspace till it looks good. I know this isn't the best description, but again, fuck around till it looks good. I don't know. <laughs> Add a bit of shadow to it and so it stands out a tiny bit and place it in a good place and do the same thing with three more weapons and you've done it. Save it as a JPEG, make another blank canvas where you stick in the same backdrop, same settings for consistency points, add in your textures and give them names and a weapon model so people know which texture goes where, save it as a JPEG and open up another blank canvas, throw in your green game screenshot, save it as a JPEG, make another blank canvas and throw in the where differences screenshots, color key them out, give them a drop shadow, done. Now for the thumbnail, can either be a super common weapon with your warping applied onto it, or use the war paint itself. You can make the thumbnail however you like, but it's there to grab people's attention. Use your textures, borders, gradients, text, I don't really care. Go look at the war paints on the workshop and take inspiration from others. Even from me if you want. I myself am going to heavily edit the backdrop to make it look like an old photograph and use it as a thumbnail. The canvas size for the war paint thumbnail should be 2048 by 2048, literally the same as your war paint texture. There is no right way to make a thumbnail, just present your war paint for how it is and try not to enhance it too much with the lightning effects and shadows as of what I did. Try to make it look pretty, that's all you want to do, because people look out for quality and if you throw in a lot of quality into your thumbnail as much as you do with your own work or the war paint, people are gonna stick around and they will follow you and you will get a following. So yes, here are some of the thumbnails I've created for my war paints. They're all a bit similar, uh, but you know, I, I I don't know. Just 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 take them. You know, I just copy them. Do whatever. Throw your own twist on them. All right, you, you, just, you just do it. Now that you have every single promo ready, all the textures ready, you are now ready for the final step uploading it to the workshop. To upload things to the workshop, you gotta first launch TF2 and in the main menu, click the little wrench button down here. Click on a publish a new item. This is where you give your war paint a name, a description and its thumbnail. Now you see, this is where it says no file selected. Well, this is the main file upload with all of the contents inside like cosmetics, maps, or other, which is the one we're going to choose. However, we have not created a zip file as of yet. Now right click and go to new and add a WinRAR zip archive. It has to be a zip archive or else the game won't detect it. And if you don't have a WinRAR for some reason, the download link for that will be in the description below. Port your textures into there and make a note that tells Val what war paint you've used, which textures replaces which, and if it is a team variant, etc. Paste that shit in there, go back to the game, find the zip file, press upload and you've done it. Kind of. Go to your workshop uploads, find a file, edit, stick all in your promos, finalize. Now, the most important thing is to not throw a hissy fit when you realize people don't like your item. Most people will oblige and tell you why they personally don't like it, rather than saying that it just flat out sucks. Because they will know that you actually tried. Use this as a challenge to get better at what you're doing, and you will build up a good reputation for yourself within the war paint creation sphere. Speaking of Warping creation, me and Sestiesis have created a Warping Discord, which is public, so you as a Warping creator can actually get direct feedback from us and other Warping creators. Again, this Discord is just for Warping creation, nothing more. There will be no shit posts, no politics, no drama, nothing. Only Warping based. And if we catch you lacking, then you'll be thrown out. Okay, bye. Hey, <laughs> uh, you made it. Wow, you've been listening to me for like, oh, what is it, like 40, 30 minutes? Goddamn, how, how are you? Um, so, that, so uh, I'm sorry this wasn't like the most detailed uh, tutorial on Earth. Uh, I could do better, I know I could do better, but holy shit, man, like this, this took way too much effort in order for me to finish. I want to see war paints become, you know, thrive. That's what I want to see. That's all I want to see, man. Uh, of course, you don't have to do all green and brown. You can do whatever you want. Um, but just keep it within the style of the game. That's all we all ask for. Or rather, that's why I ask for. But mainly, if it doesn't look like a part of the game, it will just look weird and ugly and uh, oof. I mean, we all, we've gone over this. You know, we all already know. Anyways, I hope you found this an enjoyable to some degree. And thanks to all my patrons. 
They're all over there. You're scrolling past by. Hello, thank you. All. Oh, thank you all of you. Wow. And uh, sorry if this was delayed. I'm sorry I've been gone for a while. I've, I've lost my voice. Uh, some personal issues came up that I don't know if I want to talk about here. And maybe on stream. I don't know. We'll see. Either way, uh, thanks for watching and... Uh, 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 goodbye.